Welcome back to Equipped to Endure. I am Rusty. Today we're going to talk about EDC bags. So here's what happened. I've been using a type of bag for years when I travel. So when I fly and I have to go do business meetings, all that kind of stuff, I have specific needs. And not too long ago, I was looking at my bag. I've been using Timbuktu. Many of you may be familiar with this. And I looked at that and realized, you know what? I can do better than this. This isn't meeting my needs. There's probably a better solution for me. So that sent me down the rabbit hole of, you know, researching all the different EDC bags. And of course, we got to bring you along for the journey. So fortunately, again, we have some good connections in the industry. So we got a lot of bags sent to us. And I'm just going to get ahead of this. Yes, we are going to do some giveaways. So stick tight and watch closely because we'll tell you how to be involved with that. So let me just start with this. So Timbuktu, this is like just such a durable bag. I've flown across the country with this thing. Uh, man, I, I packed this thing up and it's held up really well, but here is what I've learned. And I learned this a while ago with even, you know, more of your tactical or, or outdoor type bags. I don't like slings. So if you're walking for any distance and you just have that weight loaded on one shoulder, it starts to get uncomfortable and it's not very efficient. And that's kind of one of those duh moments, but I don't like slings. However, not all of us work as a bushcrafter for our daily job, right? Some of us have to do different types of things, whether you're a, a lawyer or a salesperson or, or whatever else, you go to the office, you're an educator, whatever, you have different, a different way you need to look in different situations. So it is nice to have something that looks at home in a business setting for me. Now, understanding that a lot of you have different jobs and they're awesome. So lots of you do some cool stuff, whether you're law enforcement, military, truck driver, whatever. So you're gonna have different needs. All right, so with this guy, I'm just gonna review it real quick. It was a good flap, good flap. I got this thing buckled down, let's get it out of here. So this thing held up really well. Those buckles can be a little tricky to get off. That's good for security. So a nice big open pouch with good admin section, good organization. Again, it served me very well for what I needed at the time, or I thought I needed at the time, but there were some things that bugged me. One, the pass-through on the back was pretty flimsy. Didn't do a great job of staying put on my roller bag. So I'm gonna pull this back up so you guys can see this right here. Now, on a side note, in case you're interested, in case you're traveling, this is what I've determined for myself. When it comes to roller bags, I like the four independent spinning wheels. The reason for that is if you go to the, the P stall in the airport, you can just stand it right there and it stays there. Also, you can walk and kind of it can maneuver easier. I just found that I like this one. Now, this was just a cheapie from Costco because I wanted to experiment with the independent rolling wheels versus the two wheels. Now, with the two wheels, you can get a little bit more cargo room because it fits into the carry-on parameters but I found that I like this enough to stay with this. I just haven't gone out and gotten the one that I necessarily wanted to, but proof of concept, I like that. Anyway, back on the EDC bags. This is kind of flimsy on there. You can see just kind of how much it moves around on that. I also didn't like how much the water bottle jutted out on the side. Now these seem, may seem like little complaints to you, but hey, we're gear nuts, so we like to have stuff just dialed in. So moved on from that and what I, decided was that I also wanted to have something that could service me well if for some reason end of the world type situation I needed to get home and I couldn't take a car or couldn't take a plane if I had to hoof it or you know if it wasn't even that dramatic but something serious happened I just needed to get out of the area I wanted something that could also function as I as a kind of get home bag or a backpack so that led me down checking out all the different hybrid type options. So this is, you can carry it briefcase style, you can carry it backpack style or sling style. Again, there are gonna be lots of different options that we're gonna cover here. We're just trying to give you a brief overview of several different options. This will not be an in-depth review of all of these different ones that we bring up, but just wanted to tell you kind of the thinking there. So we would invite you, as you are maybe considering a new EDC bag for you, is consider your needs. And what I've even started to do is put everything out that I would need to carry on a daily basis. Also, if I need to travel, so I have a TSA friendly type bag. Look at all that stuff and then that'll really help you determine what kind of setup you need for a bag, what type of compartments you need, what kind of organization you need, what kind of size you need, what the most comfortable carry is. Are you wearing a suit or are you wearing a t-shirt? All those kind of things. Consider all that and then you can dial in your perfect bag. Okay, we're aware that a lot of you guys are law enforcement officers and military and police. So we're gonna start with brands that you may be more familiar with already. We're gonna start with 5.11. Now, here's what we wanna do as far as the giveaway thing. 
We're going to give away several of these. Several we're going to hold on to for further testing and whatnot, and then probably give them away later. But what we'd like you to do is in the comments, as we go through each bag, consider it for yourself. And here's how the initial entry is going to work. And it's going to give us feedback to determine, you know, what kind of contest to run. So as we go through each bag in the comments, go ahead and write which bag you like best for you and why. So go ahead and signal that down there. And then that's going to be a cue to us for, hey, this bag is more popular. Let's maybe make this one uh, part of this giveaway or whatever. So go ahead in the comments, do that. Which bag do you like and why? Also feel free to throw in your, your critiques. Hey, I wish this bag would do that different. Or, I mean, we've got a lot of that too, but go ahead and throw your comments down there. These guys may be checking it out, so it'll be helpful feedback for them. With all that said, let's go ahead and start with the 511. It is the Amp 12. Now I've got some notes. It takes some time to go through each one of these and identify what you like and don't like. So I've got some notes here to make sure that I got it all. So this is 511 Amp 12. Now right off the bat, I, I'm telling you, if you guys watch the channel for a while, you know that I'm just so sick of Molly stuff all over everything. I mean, you don't need to look like a GI Joe everywhere you go, right? You don't need the Molly. Now it has its place. I particularly like it when it's hidden or discreet, but 511 has this cool hex grid pattern. So this is very versatile. You can go multi-directional with this and you can even take this, this whole panel off. It actually removes entirely if you want to take that hex grid off, which is a cool feature. It leaves a loop backing behind it. So this has a nice spacious clamshell. Let's go ahead and open this guy up. We'll also get some other shots for you. And we're going to have a full length article with kind of our scores on which bag, you know, for, for different reasons. We're gonna go ahead and put a link to that in the description. So go ahead and check that out. So here is that nice deep, now you see it's kind of tight and you can get it nice and compact. So it's got a nice deep clamshell there with a big loop panel there. So if you want to put, uh, you know, whether it's electronic device holders there, adjustable pouches, anything else, if you conceal care or anything like that, that would be a good thing here. Right on the flip side, they've got this nice deep mesh panel, bigger ones. I love, love, love almost as much admin stuff as you can put in there just to keep things nice and tight and organized. And again, this is a nice, deep, wide open thing. So if you need to layer in different types of clothes, it can work for that. So nice, deep, open clamshell that large loop section that we just talked about. Now there is a really cool admin section on here. Let's get that opened up. While I'm here, right behind this hex grid, there is a surprisingly deep pocket right there. So you could even slip a, a tablet down there, maps, whatever you may want to hide in there. I, I like that extra room. And then let's see, maybe that was the admin panel that I was looking at, this section right here, I believe it was. Obviously these clips on the sides are the compression straps where you can loop around and tighten that or expand it to whatever you need. From a carry standpoint, now I would say for me and for my needs, this wouldn't necessarily be a great pick for me and my everyday carry because when I'm like, if I'm traveling, I do like public speaking and stuff and we're marketing. And so when I do that, if I'm in front of people, I don't necessarily, you can judge me however you want, but I don't necessarily um, want to portray kind of a military type guy. I need to look a little bit more business professional. And so this might not do it. I'd want a little bit more of a briefcase carry, but I will say for the outdoors, this thing is awesome. This yoke, I love that contouring that wraps right around the traps. It's got adjustable sternum straps. So let's go ahead and put this on so you can kind of see that. Now we're gonna give you some different B-roll and different shots so you can see what it'd look like. But I just wanted to demonstrate how nice this this is really nice contours, really follows the trap line around your neck. Feels really great. And I love that longer, thinner profile of it. Just feels nice and snug to you. Now on the back, this has a pretty rigid back panel there. And when you flip these straps over, you can see it's exposed. It almost kind of looks like a clamshell there. And so you open this up and this is a very versatile either laptop compartment. It's got a strap there if you want to hang a hydration pack. Also a 511 and, and other guys, they, they typically have it set up to where you can put a ballistic panel in there if you wanted to. So this has a, a rough, this has a stiff plastic insert in there to keep that rigidity in that back panel. So overall, that is the AMP 511. I guess I should point this out too. So these have a very versatile kind of zipper system to where it almost looks like they're off track, but it just gives you more options 
on how you want to zip the thing up. So you kind of have to fiddle with that to see what works best for you. So that's the 511 Amp 12. All right, moving on to Mystery Ranch. So let's start with the three-way. Now I will like to say as well that it's very easy for you just to go to the website and look up the product description. They'll probably make sure that uh, all their major features that they like highlighted are there. But we're kind of pointing out things that we notice as we grab the bag. So the first thing that I notice with this three-way, first of all, it's very compact. Compared to some of the other bags and messenger bags, it's very compact. Now that can be great for some. In many ways, I like this. If I didn't have to travel or hop on the plane, and this was just a quick, you know, two meetings thing. This might be the right fit. This might be the ticket. So a few things. I love AquaGuard zippers. So those are those kind of uh, almost rubberized looking silicone type zippers that are great at keeping water out. They're sturdy, they're heavy duty, they're reliable. So I like those AquaGuard zippers. Now, another thing is you notice the structure on this bag, it's stiff. It provides a very stiff structure for laptop carry. So when you open up the laptop carry side of things, that panel, it's got nice padding inside on the walls, but also that rigid structure. Now again, it's not like hard plastic. There's some cushion in it with that foam, but that is really nice for protecting your primary workpiece there if it's a laptop that you're using. There's also, as most bags now, they have a separate panel for if you're running with an iPad or other type of electronic devices. But again, very, very nice in a business setting. I really like this. Now, since I'm showing you the back panel, now this is more like a canvas material, almost like you get with a kind of a more old school ruck type sack. Nothing wrong with that, it's just kind of that canvas. But I really like what they've done is they've tucked away the shoulder strap. So again, if you want to look just like a business briefcase, you look at this and most people wouldn't think that guy's an operator, right? So we can pull out the shoulder straps. They've got a very nice clip. You can clip them into place right here. Good plastics on this. I mean, Mr. Ranch, Dana Gleason, he knows how to design a bag, so they did really good on this. There is a little bit of this modularity that you can do with the loop along the strap. So if you want to connect a radio, a water bottle, anything like that, you've got that functionality there. So both sides, again, you can pull those out. Otherwise, it's nice and concealed, so it doesn't necessarily look like a backpack if you don't want it to. Now, I will say that things are changing. The backpacks are becoming more you know, acceptable, if you will, in a business casual type situation. But if you want a little bit more of that traditional kind of look, you can roll with this just as a briefcase. Now they also have some durable plastics. I think they've got some D-rings at strategic points here, right on the edges. If you want to carry briefcase style or, or a messenger bag style, you can do that. So let's open up the main compartment. Again, I love those AquaGuard zippers. Now it doesn't open up as a clamshell, but you may not need it to. So right in the back, they've got a nice loop panel there, some good admin section. And like I said, for me, I love that admin. I still travel with regular pens and a notebook and that type of thing. And then some dividers inside. So again, a very versatile bag, even though it's a fairly compact thing. Now I really love the admin panel on the back. I would like to know this. I didn't ask Dan, I just talked to him recently before he sent these out. And I don't know what kind of bad experience he had in his life at some point, but his tri-zip tri -zip concept, I mean, that turns up on a lot of bags. He must have had a really, really bad experience with zippers in the past, somewhere along the lines. So this is a very neat buckle. It's on another bag that we're gonna show you. I believe they're made in Germany, but it's a magnetic pull strap. And we'll get you a close up of this, but when you pull it, so it's, it's on there, it's tough, but all you have to do is pull this tab. It releases the magnet. You can hear it click. And that's how it locks in place. And again, here's that tri-zip, quick open, boom, you open it up. And then this is a really, really nice admin section. I'm a, I'm a big fan of this. And also he did factor in with the zipper and the orientation. If you're carrying it as a backpack, it lines up with that. And it still functions as a briefcase if you're gonna go that way. So I don't think, I recall one of the things that I, you know, it's a small bag, so you can't have everything, but I don't think I had a water bottle compartment, which is fine. Again, like if you want to hook it to something else or just carry a bottle. Nice compact package. That's the Mystery Ranch three-way. Mystery Ranch District 18 bag. Now, they were so kind as to design it and equipped to endure colors, so thanks for that. So right off the bat, this is an 18-liter bag with a nice suspension system. You can see the adjustable suspension right there. Nice plastics on there. It does have adjustable, I'm just gonna start with this for you. It does have adjustable sternum straps. Now, this might be popping for you, I apologize. I have my mic under my shirt here, but I much 
rather have the adjustable sternum straps that slide up and down. Now, again, that's not an act of this bag. That's just a personal preference of mine. But these have the different little loops and indentations, and we have some with the other bags similar to this. But I prefer the sliding adjustment on the sternum strap. So if I'm moving about or if I'm just adjusting my load real quick, it's a little easier rather than stopping, pulling it out, and putting it in a different spot. But again, it is adjustable to get it there. So nice harness, nice system. Um, adjustability is right there. Nice padding on the back. Again, this is only an 18 liter, more like a day pack. So it doesn't really have a lot of the grooving and paneling for ventilation. It doesn't really need it. It's not intended to be that type of bag. Has nice uh, bottle holders on either side, water bottle pouch. Uh, the cool thing about this is it doesn't really look like it's a different material, but it's some form of stretch spandex or whatever that's called, like or whatever the material is. But that enables you to, to put a bigger bottle on there on either side, however you want to carry it. So now that you're facing this way, let's start at the outer pouch. Pull this flap up, and you've got a nice deep compartment here. If you want to leave it that way, you can. Your admin's on the outside. Again, there's that black and orange E2E colors for you. So the thing here is if you want a little easier access, there's a snap that you can unsnap. And then the zipper opens it up so it almost clamshells on one side. So if you just want a little bit better access into there, you can get it. Again, I like this. This is durable fabric that they've got in here, your admin compartment, all that. Then you can zip this back up, close it up. Now let's get into the main compartment. Where'd that zipper go? Here we go, on top. Big, chunky, heavy-duty zippers there, like that. And again, I don't think we've got the AquaGuard on this. I still, I really like that AquaGuard, but I think it is a premium zipper, so maybe on the higher-end bags you'll see more of that, even though this is a pretty nice bag. So. Here is a really neat feature that I actually wish one of these other bags that we'll get to followed. So this does open up nice. There is some expansion there. It has the suspension pouch there for your laptop. You can hang other things. There's an iPad spot if you want it. Feature that I really like on this is if you want to be able to open it up all the way like a full clamshell, there are snaps on the side that you can undo with the Velcro. And that makes it possible for you to go full open clamshell if you like that. So you have the adjustability. If you want it to stay somewhat closed so that it doesn't open up and spill out your contents, you can leave that closed. But if you want the ability to lay it out, now I really like full open clamshells, I can make that adjustment and do it. So I think that's a really, really neat concept there on the District 18. And of course, nice little easy access pouch right at the top. I think these should be standard on all bags retention for a keychain if you do put your keychain in your bag. I'm not one that does that. I don't I don't really get the point of that, but anyway, some people like that. Again, this this is kind of neat too, this gusset here. When you open the pouch, I don't know if this was intentional design, but it's kind of the net effect, which I like. When you open that easy access pouch, because of the way that pocket is kind of gusseted, it kind of pulls everything toward you, if you see that. Instead of it being kind of this, you know, bottomless pouch that you got to look into, as you open it, it kind of brings everything up to you, which I think is pretty cool if that was what was intended. So that is the District 18 by Mystery Ranch. All right, so I had the chance to speak to our buddies over at Vertex recently, and I said what we're trying to do is find EDC bags that could work for a variety of people, and he said, hey, we got you covered. So this is the Gamut 2.0. We also have the Deadly Letter Sling that we're going to cover. But the Gamut 2.0 is their most popular bag. Now, Vertex is kind of known, pretty well known for their ability to conceal carry. And a lot of people actually like to use these for SBRs if you want to conceal carry that in your backpack on a daily basis. Again, that's not necessarily, <laughs> that wouldn't really fit in my type of profession, but for some it really would and it would work well. So the way they do that, and I really like how they did this. So this is the main inside panel. I know I'm not going in the same order for each one of these, but I'm just hopping through, bear with me. So they have the tab there if you want to hang either a water pouch, like a, a water bladder, camelback type thing. If you want to insert, I think they have another panel back there if you want to insert a ballistic panel. But I really, really like the versatility of their laptop suspension system. So this whole black piece right here, this foam insert, can be adjusted both for width. If you have a wider computer or narrower computer, you can pull it in and out. And if you want to go deeper or higher. So if you want that suspension further from the bottom of the backpack, just to give it some extra protection there from bumps or falls, you can do that. Also um, to adjust for the height. So the way that it works is this Velcro 
behind this main panel is you can come in here and you can undo it. And there's that loop on the back side of this loop panel that that connects to. So it kind of reaches around and hugs that back panel wherever you put it. Now again, some people will use this for their laptop or they'll just put their SBR right in there. Now, since we have this main open, I love clamshells. I told you that already. Just the versatility there, the, the ability to pack in it, to get into stuff without having to. I feel like the bucket type panels, <clears throat> and I know that this is popular with like bush crafters for their outdoor kit and they have their purpose. But for me, I don't like looking down into a bucket trying to get down at stuff. I'd rather be able to lay it open and have easy access to my stuff. Again, that's personal preference. So the actual inside of the clamshell pouch has some loop up here. It has the admin for pens, all that kind of stuff. Again, if you need to con connect other things, I really like their mesh material for their, their organization. And this folds down over the top. So that is the main compartment. <laughs> Which bag are you liking the best so far? I was just telling Chris that that Mystery Ranch three-way, if it wasn't for travel, if it was just hopping in the car, going to the office and back, I think I like, might like that three-way the best so far. All right. By the way, I should mention the fabric. This is a nice waterproof fabric uh, that they have. There has some good um, traction to it. Now, a lot of the tactical bags are covered with molly. Now this has molly, but I really appreciate what they did they actually hit it. So if you want to get to that molly, you can open it up and you have a large panel here of your molly, your loop. They've also got loop here for a hook and loop. So it's actually versatile there. You can use that as molly or if you want to use that to, as a Vel Velcro pouch, you can do that as well. Now, this is kind of a cleverly hidden expansion system here because they have these straps and hooks so what you can do is if you have something bigger to carry on the outside, a helmet, coat, skateboard, whatever you got, you can take this and come up and hook it onto these straps on the side right here. Let's see if I can get that quickly for you. And that gives you that expansion ability to carry things on the outside. You'll see this a lot with like hunting backpacks when you know they take down their bowl or whatever they got and they've got to mount a big rack to them. That expansion or a big you know, side, they can put it right there and expand with it. So that is that outside panel. And again, I, I think that Molly has its place and it is super useful, but just for an everyday type carry, this is a great way to be discreet about it and kind of hide it. So you can roll that up and tuck it if you want that Molly exposed. You can attach it to that loop if you always want it exposed. The other way, this hides away. And for the most part, you wouldn't even know it was there. On the outside, they have the expandable water bottle pouches where, which you can adjust with the, the drawstring. And then on both sides, if I recall correctly, they have a mirror kind of compartment. And this is right inside the water bottle. Now this would be my only complaint about this actual feature, is if you have a full size 32 ounce water bottle right here, it's gonna be putting pressure out and in. So when you open this up, they have that zipper pouch right there for you to tuck things in there as well as a, another pouch, but that might be a little tough when you've got that bottle in there. And I think the other side is just a slightly different layout. All right, so there you go. Same kind of zipper pouch, and yeah, there's a little bit different layout. Again, more admin there. I'm a sucker for that admin section, so. There it is. Now, I think we've gone through most of it, except, well, let's actually look at the harness system real quick or the, I should say, the uh, sternum strap. So again, nice contoured shoulder straps. You can throw it on there. It does have the adjustable sternum straps. It's a little bit different system than the other one, so you can fiddle with that until you get it to right where you want it. But you can see that it loops right around your traps there in your yoke, so it's a nice comfortable carry. They also have the waist strap there to get some of that weight off. Nice pass-through. So a nice tight pass through there. And some people will even put that ballistic panel I told you, and, and you'll even see some people demonstrate this like a shield if you've got that ballistic panel there. So let's go ahead and open up that compartment. And this has that double zipper where it can open or close. It's kind of tricky to explain. They've got their rapid access tab. I think this is where a lot of people like to set up their concealed carry. So they have this set right here as an example for you. 
Again, you can do an SBR there on this panel versus that inside panel if you want. You can also run your smaller things and you can use this as your main lap con laptop compartment if you want to. Again, versatility here, however you want to use it, that's what it's intended for. Okay, one last thing I want to mention on this. Lots of these bags have them, maybe don't have them, but if you want just a little bit of extra security, if you do end up traveling with something that this is appropriate for you to use, they do have the security zippers with those holes so they're lockable. So you can run a lock through that, or if you just want to run a string or twist tie or anything, just to make it a little harder for people to get into there, to get into, that's a, that's a nice feature there. So again, this is the Vertex Gamut 2 bag. Oh, let's look at the top hatch. Nice, deep, open pouch with, again, the key loop right there. I end up throwing stuff in here, so what I'll typically throw in these top patches are sunglasses, chapstick, maybe my wallet based on the situation. Some of them have an RFID pouch, which we'll show you later. Anything like that, maybe uh, AirPods and a charging cable that you need to use regularly. All right. Next up, we've got the Vertex Dead Letter Sling. Now, I was pretty impressed with some of the clever solutions that they came up with this. If you want a messenger sling style bag, I think that this accounts for what I think are weaknesses of the messengers or a sling. So let's just start with the suspension to kind of talk about that, which I think is one of the main features. Now, this kind of reminds me of the uh, three-point harness that I got for my, my SPR. I'm trying to remember the name of that. I think it was a Magpul. What do they call it? The HM3 or something? Anyway. That's not about EDC bags. Let's get back on EDC bags. So right behind this panel, so they have the pass-through, right, for travel. And up at the top, it's a pass, well, it's not a full pass-through both ways, but they have a large buckle that you can connect the main shoulder strap to. Now what's interesting is that same setup is on both the, I'm gonna try to use two hands here is on both the top and the bottom. I'll show you what I'm talking about just in a second. So got that clip back in. So down here, you notice that same buckle. So the point there is if you want to carry it this way orientation or this way, you can, which I think is pretty neat. Now the other thing about this system that I think is really smart, you connect it to the side strap. Again, you can switch based on your orientation, but if you just have it like this, you know, you still got a lot of movement there, particularly if you've got it loaded out. So they incorporated a waist strap into it, kind of like a cross strap where it goes across your sternum to lock it in place, which I think is really cool. So that does account for one, I think, of the drawbacks of a sling style bag. Now again, that weight is still on the one shoulder or on the waist where you're at. I'd rather distribute that, but for a sling, I think that's a really, really smart feature. So again, you can change the orientation of it based on you want. So that's the suspension system. We already talked about the back panel, similar on the other Vertex that we showed you. So let's get right into the main compartment. The compartment again, they have the rapid access tabs. So if you want to pull that, you can. Just rip it open. So, just like on that mystery branch bag we showed you how you can change it from a clamshell into has that gussets that keep it from falling open. This has a similar function with a gated clip here. So let me get this open for you. So I won't do it on both sides just to save a little time for you. So you can do the same thing and lay it all the way open if you want to. Now I was sold on this a while back. This is, I don't think is intended to do that, but for TSA compliance, so you can open your bag and just send it straight through the, uh, the scanner without having to pull the laptop back. Every, la every airport I go to now, you still have to take the laptop out. So that whole kind of TSA friendly bag thing hasn't worked out for me recently because you still have to take your laptop and electronics out. So let's close this guy back up. Clip it closed. Lots of loop. Again, you can see their kind of suggested layout there if you want to carry a, a water squirter around with you. Now here is something that I think this does well. I do buy this, when I say buy this, I say it's believable as a briefcase because it has that side carry strap, which I do like and frequently when I'm just moving around a meeting or something like that, I'll just grab it by the side to quickly move it instead of doing the full harness over the shoulder thing. Now just like the gamut had that kind of discreet loop panel with the molly, this one has the same thing. So you just reach right up under here, you can grab that tab, rip it open, and you've got that versatile loop slash molly panel that's adjustable all the way across if you want any of your modular things. And again, it still has that neat expansion ability where if you want to strap something to the outside of your bag, 
you can go ahead and do that and reach up and then connect it so they have that extra expansion capability. So let's go ahead and zip that guy up. Get it tucked away. And then let's look at, I believe this is the admin compartment that we're opening. So nice admin section right there. Again, that nice see-through mesh. So you can open this up, get in what you need to, and you can still kind of see what's in there. Another compartment if you want to carry electronics or any other notebooks or books or whatever else that you got there. Another big loop panel. I will say this for Vertex, for 511, for uh, VanQuest. These guys have a lot of loop on the interior, so it's very modular and very customizable. That is the dead litter, <laughs> let me try that again. That is the dead letter sling by Vertex. All right, next up, you may recognize this bag, so we don't need to spend a ton of time on it, but this is the VanQuest Addix 25. Now, we gave this away last Christmas to our winner for our Christmas giveaway, and I was kind of pining the loss of it because I really, really liked the bag and wanted one for me. So let's run through this. Now, there are some things that, oh man, would make it almost perfect for me, but we'll run through the main features. So nice straps, nice ventilation on the back. I do like a little bit uh, more rigid kind of pass-through. It has the pass-through here, but it has that kind of that, that seat belt type uh, material here. But again, it, it does the job and it'll hold it on there. Now, they, this is intentionally, I believe this is part of their Urban series. So they were trying to look less tactical and I think they achieved that and did a great job of it. So they're different colors. This is the, the dark gray one. I think they call it a charcoal. They have another blue, I think, and some different color va variations. So anyway, when you throw it on, it does have a little bit more adjustable of a sternum strap there where it doesn't have the necessary, the kind of the preset ridges that you follow, but it's a little more adjustable than that. You can make micro adjustments, I guess, right there. So I do like this. Again, that's comfortable for just kind of an everyday type situation. There's the pass-throughs. Let's get into the main compartment. So when you open this up, big, big panel of loop. Also on the inside, the bottom half also has that loop there for adjustability. Now, one of the big things that I like, let me grab a water bottle to show you. We also gave away a Titanium VanQuest water bottle. Ryan Vargo sent these out to feature again. We're big fans of Vargo product. Go check them out. They do lots of cool titanium things. This is just a stainless steel water bottle, but good price. And I like, I like Brian Vargo who makes these things. So we'll, we'll give him a shout out. So inside this bag on either side, there is a pouch designed specifically to carry a water bottle, which I like. I like having the water bottle being able to tuck in to the inside instead of bumping around on the outside, because that was one of my issues with bags being in the airport out and about is when that water bottle is kind of offset and hanging out there, it can fall out, it can bump things, it can catch things. So I like being able to fit it in. However, the flip side is, this is all that loop material. And again, I'm not sure what the actual material is, whether it's cotton or some sort of nylon or something, but if it starts leaking inside, anything that you put in here can be exposed to that. There is a solution, one of our other bags that we looked at that we really like. But again, as long as your lid is on there tight, you should be fine. So you have that versatility of carrying the, the water on either side based on you know where you want the load out or whatever. Another really neat thing about this is you see that this mesh panel, it's not flush, but it has some gusseting there so it can actually expand, which is great because if you put some bigger things in here, maybe a charging block or your, your digital charger or phone or keys or gloves or some sort of clothing is you have some expansion capability there, which I really like. And they've got that great mesh material. I don't think, yeah, they don't have, they don't have that quick uh, panel on the top, I don't believe. Let's jump into... And you know, I'm, I'm seeing this more on bags, but it's kind of that seatbelt type nylon. Is that a nylon, Chris? That seatbelt material, do you know? Yeah, it's like a thick nylon. It has some, a nice tactile feel to it. It's still smooth, it's super strong. So they do have the AquaGuard zippers here on this laptop panel, which is nice for a little extra protection there. So again, doesn't open up all the way. It's got those gussets keeping it closed so nothing falls out. You have that Velcro enclosure so you can slip your backpack down into there. Again, if you do an SBR type thing and you want to carry it on you, again, that might be a good place for that. Also that nice iPad place. And if you've got extra notebooks or notepads that you want to stuff in there, versatile that way. Keep it just a little more tension in there with that Velcro strap over the top. So that is your laptop area. 
One more quick mention, these do, if you can see that there, these do have the security zippers when they sit together, you can actually run something through them to keep them locked. All right, let's get to the outer panel. Well, let's start at the bottom real quick. They have a little bit of that almost molly daisy chain at the bottom in case you wanna lash something onto the bottom. So there's some expansion capability there. So let's start with this top pouch on the outside. Let me zip this into a little extra structure. Get this guy out of the way. All right. So lots of versatility in this admin section when you get out here. This actual opens up. There's your keychain clip. Tuck some other things in here. Again, sunglasses, phone, whatever it is that you throw in these type of sections. Your pens, pads, all that. Another zipper section right here. Love that. And I'll, I'll mention this real quick on the zip pulls. I really like that they have these hard plastic kind of finger loops for the pulls you can grab a hold of and rip them up. That makes it a lot I don't know about a lot more convenient, but more convenient than trying to grab those little ties or a small zipper pull. Okay, so that is the top out portion there. Now let's get into the middle one. Deeper admin section there for bigger items. Again, if you roll big flashlights, maybe some other bottles, maybe some other uh, supplies, emergency blankets, whatever you want to put in there, but it's versatile. Now let's get back to the main point. From a non-tactical EDC standpoint, I really, really like this bag. I think it's got a good, clean look. It's urban, doesn't look too uh, over-stylized or anything. It would just not stand out, but it would still look clean. Now, here's what I think would make this bag close to perfect. I would love it if they had a side, candle hair, a side carry handle so you could carry it briefcase style, maybe reorient the pouch or, or the badge and do something different with it. And if there was a way to stow the shoulder straps. In my opinion, I would, that would really, really bring this, home ba this bag home for me. Now again, I really do like this the way it already stands, but those two extra little features would be very nice. So that is the VanQuest Addix 25. Now before we move on from VanQuest, lots of these companies make <coughs> their systems to be modular. So VanQuest is no exception. They have all sorts of fun little pouches that expand themselves that have hook and loop on there. So if you want to attach, I guess I'll just demonstrate real quick. For instance, I put together a TSA compliant kind of survival pouch, if you will. There is a water filter in here, a fire kit, emergency blanket, some, some paracord, that kind of stuff. Now I put this all in one kit instead of having it just flopping around all different places in the bag so I have easy access to it. So if we were to take this bag, Open it up with those nice holes. I lay this open. If I wanted this closer to the top where I could get it, then you just take off these badges or these patches to expose the hook, and then you can attach it directly to the loop portion of the bag and have it hang in there. And that's how you can create a modular system. You can build it out like that, which is really neat. So VanQuest has all these different sizes. Again, lots of these different companies have that. I really like their pouches. They expand nicely if you want them to expand. My only drawback, and it's not really a crit criticism, but just a preference for the VanQuest, the large pouch, is when I tried to use this on my last travel trip, this is oriented so that the opening is facing the long way. So when you're trying to tuck clothes in there, or fold them and made it just a little trickier for me rather than when they open like a hot dog instead of a, you know, going in the other side. So that would be my only recommendation on, on this size, make it so that it can open up and lay open like a, a full clamshell as opposed to trying to get down in there. That made it a little tough to pack. So I just opted for a different pouch on that one. Okay, that's VanQuest. All right, Chris just let me know that the mic under the shirt was kind of rubbing when I was doing all the backpack stuff. So we pulled it out. Hopefully the audio is better for you now. Sorry for the frustration. Okay, this was a late entry. These guys just sent this to us recently. This is a company called Knack Bag. Now I will say this, all the bags that we started with, you're probably familiar with a lot of those brands. They're, they're more well known in the tactical, law enforcement kind of space, the bushcraft kind of space. A lot of people know those names. And here is one of my complaints about these survival communities. We tend to get a little insular and siloed. We tend to kind of think that we know best and not look out for good ideas from other groups or other areas or other interest groups. I think a great example of that is not looking at ultralighters backpacks and learning from them 
I was recently talking, I think he was the, uh, a representative from Aku. They're a, a shoemaker, they make some really, really nice stuff. He was a Marine, and he said, man, after rucking with 100 pounds, he got out, and then he got into ultralight backpacking, and absolutely loved it. And that's something that I think we need to embrace more, is there are some people in different groups that find solutions that are fantastic, and we need to be wise enough to look out there. Now, anyway, with that said, not all of us, I mean, maybe a lot of us pretend to be operators on a day-to-day -day standpoint, but a lot of us are, you know, just average Joes that like to be prepared in situations. So there's a lot of good solutions out there that maybe not be, may not be made by the tactical brands. So I wanted to take a look at some of these and kind of expand our horizons to look at some of these options. With all that said, this is a group called Knackbag. And this one is, it's pretty compact, but it's surprising how much it can do. So they've got that contoured. It's a really soft, kind of comfortable bag. It looks a little bit more almost like, you'd believe that if that was an Under Armour logo. It almost looks more like that type of bag. But let's just start on the back, and I think there's some really cool features. So you can just carry it briefcase style. Now for me, the design of this makes it just look like you're carrying a backpack sideways because of the different angles that they chose. I'd prefer this to be a little bit more symmetrical so it looked like a briefcase when you carried it. A nice handle, feels solid. So it's got a nice pass through similar to those other ones that we looked at with that back panel. So this zipper at the top looks a little odd and out of place, but when you open it, what that does is opens up your backpack strap compartment. And so you bring these little clam hooks, or what are these things called, the uh, lobster claws down, and you can connect that to the D-rings. As simple as that. Undo the, and another nice part about these knack bags, a lot of these components are, are uh, metal, so like these, uh, these little straps here, these adjustable ones I think are uh, metal buckles. So you can throw this on, Again, hopefully this isn't blowing out your ears with the mic. So when you connect your sternum straps, I am a big fan of the sliding sternum strap because it gives you that micro, adjustment cap that micro adjustment capability and you don't have to stop, unwind something, put it back into the right spot. It's nice and quick to find that perfect spot. So I'm a big fan of that type of adjustment. Decent suspension. Again, it doesn't feel like, feel like it's really built for heavy duty use like you would get with some of those maybe more of those tactical type brands but it would still serve its purpose so i'm gonna go ahead and stow these so again you just undo these lobster claws if i'm calling those things right they're not lobster claws they're just a different type of clasp tuck that down right in here sorry let me show you that tuck those down in there you wouldn't even know that they're there if you were using that as a briefcase carry so I do like that feature a lot. Okay, let's move back into the main compartment again. You will see the security zippers where they connect. You can go ahead and do, um, whether it's a little padlock, there are TSA compliant locks, and I think we, there's actually somewhere I put one that is a TSA compliant lock. If you're not familiar with those, they're not necessarily great for carrying outside of the airport because there are some thieves who get a hold of the security device that they can to bypass those locks but they are great if you're actually traveling and do need to check a bag or run it through security just to keep it safe while it's out of your hands. All right, so let's open up the main compartment. And this one is not a full clamshell. It goes, oh, I'm sorry, I take that back. It is, it lays open like this. Now, this may or may not meet your needs. This bag seems, this bag seems to really have been designed for travelers that want to put all of their stuff in one bag. So clothes and everything. So the, the modularity they built in this, the expansion, and I'll show you some of the bags and, and accessories that come with it, but really designed to be able to travel with your clothes as well. Now for me, I always like to travel with a separate suitcase for clothes, because one thing is, I really like this, call me, call me a wimp, I don't even care, but I like to get the weight off of my back. I don't like to be in the airport walking around everywhere I go lugging everything on my back. So when you have a pass through like this, you can just pass it through on your, your carry on. And now I can just simply wheel that around and I don't have the weight on my back. That's a deal for me. I do not like carrying everything on my back, but for some people, that's what they want to do. So I think this is a great, great solution for that big zipper pouch here. Tuck things away, whether that's your 
undergarments, your socks, whatever you're traveling with, the adjustability here, again, an expansion type uh, buckle there to keep clothes separate. There is a big expansion zipper around the side here. Let me find that. Where did it go? I think, yeah, it is kind of tucked away cleverly. So there's this lip that runs around the edge of the bag that when you actually open it up, that exposes the zipper. And so that is what you chase around the bag, 360 degrees to give you significant, I think it's a 10 liter, it's like 50% more of the bag expansion. I mean, that, that's a significant amount of expansion there to open it up to make it almost like that, that suitcase type thing, suitcase to, to add your clothes in there. So that's the expansion capability. Let's go ahead and close up that. All right, now the big pouch on the outside. This is where you've got more of your admin type stuff. You can throw a laptop, you can throw, you know, your pens, your pencils, your notebook, all that kind of thing. Now this is an interesting material on the inside. Uh, you can kind of feel that rough texture, but it feels really durable in there. The zipper pouches, I think this is a really, really well designed bag for its intended purpose. More security patches. Now on the outside, let's take a quick look at this. This one I'm not terribly impressed with. <clears throat> this is the interior water bottle pouch. So you can carry a water bottle pouch inside your bag stowed away. The problem is that it's kind of tapered in a way that you can't carry, where'd that guy go? So your, your standard 32 ounce Nalgene style bottle will not go down in there at least not from my experience. It doesn't tuck well in there. You need to get down into that 24 ounce, 22 ounce narrow water bottle. And I just like carrying a 32 ounce water bottle. So that's the water bottle carry. And then on the outside, that main panel, again, this is just a beautiful admin section. I'm a nerd for this, but clip, pen loops, lots more pen loops there. You can stick cards. You can stick a, a recharging uh, device if you want. Just lots and lots of options. Padded in the inside here because I don't think this one has the, the quick access for like a sunglass pouch or that kind of thing. So it's just tucked into the top here. Anyway, it goes deep. And again, lots of pouches and versatility there. If you want a separate notebook container, there it is. And then the zipper pouch on the inside. Now let's get to these accessories. So knack, book, or knack bags wanted to show us their their modular packing cubes that were specifically designed for this bag. This is their most popular model. So I believe this was the Knackback Model 2 regular is what the size is. I think it comes in a bigger one. But all these little cubes fit perfectly in. They were designed with this in mind when you open up this travel compartment, or I should say luggage compartment, whatever you want to call it, to where these cubes the two medium ones fit perfectly side by side in there if that's what you want. There was a large size designed to fit right in there by itself. Fits perfectly. It's actually even tapered with the same orientation as the bag. There it goes. I mean, it's, it's impressive how well they designed that to fit just perfectly in there for travel. Let me just show you this real quick while I'm open so you know what I was talking about on the, on the VanQuest one. So on the travel cubes, I like it where it opens full clamshell along the long orientation so it's easier to pack when you when you do that. Okay, they also have this really neat, it's almost like little steel wire mesh, but it's a neat, it's almost like a little pencil bag. So if you wanna carry around either little cables, other little vices, even little pencils or pens or something, they've got this neat pouch that you can stick stuff into and then throw it in one of those main compartments. And one last thing with them, really neat, I actually just used this on a trip I got back from uh, last week where they have this shoe bag that if you wanna keep all your stuff from getting gunked up inside, there's this nice, it's like a silni or something material with this compartment inside that can keep your shoes separate. So you can just stuff your shoes in there. Actually, I'll just throw it. I got my tactical Santa slippers on right now. So I'll show you what that looks like. Just stuff one in one side, another in the other side. Keeps them from kissing in the bag. And then that whole thing you can close up so the shoes aren't getting each other dirty and it's not getting anything else in your bag dirty. So I really like that shoe bag. So altogether, that is the Knack Bag Model 2 Regular.
Okay, we've got two models from Air here. This is the City Pack and the Flight Pack. Now this one is special because it has this X-Pack material and I'll get to that in a minute, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with the City Pack and we will get into it. So right off the bat, one thing that I really like about this bag is the symmetrical design because this works great as a briefcase. Again, it has that kind of rolled seatbelt nylon material, which I really dig. That seems to be a modern thing and I, I like that. I'm not modern, but I'm, I'm seeing it more regularly. They've also got a lot of Hypalon little features on it. So Hypalon's kind of that synthetic rubber material. So really clever that there's a little flap that covers over the top and you'll see this with like rain jackets and other jackets that covers the top of that zipper so that where the AquaGuard zipper seam meets at the top and there's a hole there, it's protected and covered by that in case you live in a rainy environment. So let's just start at the outside. So again, I feel like there's just a lot of attention to detail in the design with the Air products. I've been really impressed. Now you see on the outside, you'll see these kind of sew seams here. I think that's really smart, those gussets, because what that does is that gives you that expansion capability in those pouches when you get out there. So here is one of my gripes with this design. It's the same on both of these. Both of these are very, very similar from a layout standpoint. I think there's a lot of potential on these outside panels to, to put some cool stuff in here, whether a really ornate admin compartment or whatever. Again, I know that maybe you don't need that or like that, I do. But the pouch, when you open this up, you'd expect it to be able to go both ways, but it's only going one way. There's only space over here. The other side is used up with something inside. And even out here, oh, I think I tucked some of their stuff in here. So here's where you're gonna find your keychain gated clip there. And I feel like this is just a wasted section. There's no admin or anything. It's just a pouch. It's just kind of a, it reminds me of like your utility drawer that you just throw everything into your batteries, your, your tongs, whatever else you throw in there. So I just felt like that was a kind of a lost opportunity that could have done something cool with. Again, I like the main feature from the outside, the structure of the bag. I just wish they would have done something different and given you both panels. All right, let's move on to the compartment closest to the outside there. Here's where you do hit your admin. And it's a nice admin pouch. Some people use this for like a magic mouse or whatever mouse that you use, your pens, whatever else. This is neat. Another additional zipper pouch that's fairly deep for you to hide stuff. And then this goes all the way down in the back, this panel here. Now this isn't necessarily the laptop panel, but or laptop compartment, but you can put something deep in there. And then there's more pouches down at the bottom as well as that space to fill up. Here's those gussets that I was talking about that allow you to you know, push that out a little bit if you need a little more space in that compartment. Okay, moving on, they do have an easy access top panel. Again, they do have that little Hypalon cover to keep that zipper protected from getting wet. Nice, kind of almost a foamy soft panel in there. It's, it's um, how do you describe it? It's almost like there's some padding in there to protect any sort of sensitive valuables you may put in there, like sunglasses. And now as we get into this main compartment, keep, keep in mind this, this pouch, because behind there is a little, I think, really, really cool feature of the actual air design. So we're going to move into the main compartment. Not a full clamshell. It does get stuck because you have the water pouch out here. So when you get this open, this pouch right here is that easy access pouch that you get from the outside, but look what we have right behind it. I think this is a really, really cool feature up here at the top. So this is a hidden tiny little pouch for a tile or Apple AirTag. I think that's really clever, really smart. Most people would never think to look in there. They would just open this up, see this pouch. They would not think to open that up. That's the same on both bags in case I forget to mention it for the other one but I think that's a pretty smart little thing. Again, just one of those little touches. Yeah, you could put an air tag somewhere else, but just that they have a dedicated spot for it, I think it really shows their attention to design. And I was impressed with that. Okay, a couple more big pouches there with the elastic bands for versatility. You can put an iPad here. Now here's something that I did notice about these bags right off the bat. The laptop compartment has this thick, thick foam padding there. It really feels like, you know, almost like custom, padding for a package that you're gonna ship, like it's fit in there, it's really, really nice, almost like a Pelican case or something. So nice padding there for your laptop. And there is a somewhat rigid panel there. Now this is something that I do wanna draw attention to because it's different on the other bag that I'm gonna show you. 
They do have the adjustable, let me just throw this on. Oh, here's another one of these cool uh, magnetic buckles. This is the sternum strap and you push it apart and you can hear it snap together. But that way it doesn't pull apart, but you have to push it to open it. So I'll show you that here. All right, so you can actually see the little magnet on the back of the buckle there. So we're gonna snap, you can actually see it draw it in like that. And that does not go anywhere, but it's a quick release when you just push it in. Okay, so adjustable strap here. Again, it can slide up and down, not quite as easy as the other one that I showed you, but you can still micro adjust that. Now here's my beef with this bag. If you wanna carry it, they do have the side carry option, but the problem is these straps are just out and about. So if you're trying to carry it like a briefcase, it just looks like you're carrying the backpack on the side. Not a big deal, but again, if you need it to look like a briefcase, that doesn't really do well. So the workaround is trying to wrap the straps around themselves so that they don't bounce around as much. Overall, really nice bag. Water bottle pouch with elastic on the outside there. And I think that's a really clean design. All right, this is the Air Flight Pack. Now, right off the bat, the actual material, the other one was Cordura, which we all know is a good fabric and it'll hold up, it's durable and has a little bit of waterproofness to it. So this is called X-Pack and we're seeing this pop up more and more in bags. I think this is a phenomenal material. Many of you may be familiar with what's called Cuban fiber or Dyneema fabric and it's ultra expensive. It's super, super expensive to get a fabric that is that light and that strong. I mean, you'll find like a ground cloth or like a tarp of it for like 150 or 200 bucks or 300. It just depends on the brand, what you're looking for. It's a very expensive material. As far as I know, X-Pack is kind of the second best on the market as far as lightweight and durable fabric used in goods like bags. And I think it's gonna find its uh, way into other things like tarps, like tents, that kind of thing. But it's half the cost. So this is a little piece of the fabric so you can see it. And I think what they've done is actually, if I recall the construction, is it's a woven synthetic fabric. And I think these yellow strips are actually uh, like Kevlar, or I mean, it could be like a Denima too, but it's a, it's a very, very durable, tough, what's the word, I'm thinking, a material there. And it's laminated, so it has a waterproof coating on it. So this makes it very, very, very durable and lightweight and half the price of Dyneema or Cuban fiber. So this bag is made out of, oh, let me get back to it too. It was primarily known as a sail material. So you think of cloth sails on boats, you know, they need, they need um, obviously to be durable and hold up against the elements and they need to have a good amount of sun resistance, right? So that they don't deteriorate in the sun. And that's what this stuff is popular with. So they use it now in bags. So that was kind of a long, piece to tell you about the material, which again, we're seeing pop up in more bags. We have one more to show you, but keep an eye out for X-Pack material. Okay, same exact layout, I had same complaint. I just think there was a wasted opportunity. However, they did do equipped indoor colors. So kudos to you on that, Eric, good thinking. They do have the you know key holder there, but there's no organization in that outer pouch. They do the AquaGuard zippers on this one, which I don't think they did on the City Pack. So again, that's gonna give you more waterproofing and more you know, more uh, protection. That way, if you live in a inclement environment, and that orange on the inside, admin section, great, great color choice. Good job, guys. And then we're gonna keep working down the panel. So everything else is the same as far as the organization. You can just go look at the other one. It's the same exact layout, maybe a little bit bigger. They do have, again, that Hypalon on the top to help protect the zippers. By the way, in case, in case you are interested, Hypalon is going out of vogue. People are stopping to use it. It was sold as a synthetic rubber that does not deteriorate or break down, but they are finding that it, it cracks and breaks down a little bit. So people are moving into different synthetic rubbers in case you're interested. This is a big selling point for me in this flight pack versus the city pack. Remember one of my complaints was that the straps were just kind of flopping around. This has that padding there, the, the channel for airflow, but you can see that those straps are not flopping around. They're not even visible because they tuck away behind this panel. So you can pull out the straps. Again, it has the same sternum straps, that same magnetic buckle, and that way it keeps it nice and tight. So, I mean, you can see that. You've seen me do it enough where you clip it on, you know what happens. So we're gonna go ahead and stow those back. And so now you just have a very nice looking, durable briefcase if that's the route you wanna go. 
So this is Air Designs, A-E-R is how you spell it and you pronounce it, Air. I verified that just to make sure. Air Designs, one more quick little thing. Their water bottle pouch, you actually zip open so that it can expand and it has that elastic in there with the mesh so that you can expand it on the outside. Now this is a newer company that I was just exposed to recently. They're called Boundary. You can check them out at boundarysupply.com. The thing that caught my attention was actually, uh, I was in California and um, saw somebody with this bag and I noticed the X-Pack on it and I was just checking out the, the other X-Pack bag I was showing you and I went, hey, is that X-Pack? Got talking to them more, learn more about Boundary. And so got a hold of this. This is called the Errant Pro. And Boundary, the way they make their bags, I think they have four main lines, but they come as kind of modular systems and they're very, design specific. There's a case used for the design behind them. And so we got a hold of this one because I thought this would be maybe the most versatile and, and appropriate for our audience here for you guys. So let's take a look at it. Right from the get-go, let's look at the back. This is one of the most robust harness systems of all of these bags. Now, again, for everyday carry, I mean, you know, hip belts and, and the robust shoulder system, I mean, that's going to be common when you get in your outdoor bags. But when you get in EDC bags, you don't see that as much. And I think what these guys are really trying to do is, is try to bridge both a little bit to, to meet those needs. So you can actually pull out the hip strap if you want to and get rid of that. But otherwise, they have the adjustable harnesses and suspension system, and they also use those magnetic clips that we pointed out. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on so you can see what this looks like. And I think I've had that loosened up a lot <laughs> when I was just checking it out. So I need to tighten that up a bunch. But again, this has the, the adjustable sternum straps. Now, my personal preference, you may like it more if you want it locked in more, but I like the sliding adjusters. This one has those individual slots, so you can only move up their preset notches. And again, that's fine if that's what you prefer. It's not that big of a deal. It's not a deal breaker for me, but I do prefer the, the adjustability. So there's that sternum strap. And again, it is magnetic and you just push it apart and it snaps back together. Nice suspension there. You can feel that that would hold up. Pass through, just like we talked about for travel. So you tip it on its side, you pass it over your, your handle for it. Nice tucked away loop to, uh, to hang it. So let's move our way forward on the bag. It's got the AquaGuard zippers and it also has the security zipper poles. You can see there with the hoops or the loops so you can put it together stick either a TSA compliant padlock or another smaller one there for security or whatever else you want. So you can pull this part. One other quick thing before I get into it. It doesn't really look like it fits, but they got it on there and it works. In case you just want the utility, not necessarily the look of a briefcase, but the utility of being able to carry something on the side, they do have that side carry handle right there if you do want to carry it. If you're just moving from you know one room to another, whatever, you just want to grab it like that, that is built into it. Full clamshell opening. I think these guys are very smart with how they set this up. So it's that magnetic clip again where you just push it together to pull it apart. Laptop carry in that main compartment. Right behind this now, they kind of doubled up on the magnet. So that's a magnet clip right there. So you undo that one, and then for your iPad compartment, there's also another type of magnet um, retention right there. So you can see and hear that. So it has those double retention. It's kind of that stacked retention for your electronics to keep them safe. I think this is a really smart idea too. I think this is thought to detail, but these little pull tabs for the elastic pouches here, just make it that much easier to kind of get in there, get your fingers out of the way and tuck things in or pull things out. So again, I think that's a really nice little attention to detail piece there. This compartment, and I'm not quite sure when you need to use this, there are these zipper tabs keeping this from zipping up all the way. Again, it's a quick open, so you can open this up. This is really intended to be kind of a, a do-all bag, it seems, for whether you're traveling and also photographers. They have a whole separate module that you can fit, and I'll show you the access panel for it later if you're into photography, where you can slip your cameras in through the side. It has this big loop area here panel to where you can put your, your different modules if you want to. So this can open up, but if you want this to be a complete pass through, this whole flap here with your, your organization, your pouches and all that can come completely out. 
So you can take the zippers, you can take the Velcro, and you can take this whole pouch completely, if you want that divider, you can take it completely out if you just want that to be a pass-through. Very intention built and a lot of attention to detail on it. Just how the little things fit together, a lot of fit and finish, really clever on it. Good materials, it seems. And I do like a combination of big and small pouches. So a lot of area there. So let's close that up and move further into the bag. I'll show you that, that side compartment that I just mentioned. <coughs> this material has a cool feel to it and I like that effect. It almost has like a chain link, that kind of diamond pattern because of that really, really tough fiber that runs through on those crossing patterns. It gives it that kind of texture, almost like a scale look on the material. So even aesthetically, it has a cool, cool vibe to it. All right. So where's that main side? I, okay, so big water bottle pouch. Again, they have that exposed tab that makes it easier to pull out and open. So on this side, right on the side, they have a very cool, so this is AquaGuard zippers. They have a very cool little admin pouch right on the side there if you want to get into it. They also have their kind of proprietary little hooks throughout the bags where they have little magnetic keychains or accessories that you can clip into that if that's, uh, what, again, what you like to do. So that's the admin part. And then I think it was, let me find that guy. Oh, right above it. That's why I got thrown off. So that's the little zipper for the admin part. The zipper right above it is what you pull and open up for a big side entry into that main compartment. So what you'll see like photographers do with this is they can bring this down on either side. I'm not a photographer, that's not what I do. So if you need to get into it quickly, you can just tip it over to the side, open that up, grab your camera, grab your lens, grab your extra batteries, whatever you need, and it's easy access there. Now they do have a module, we'll put a clip of it or a, a still shot of it that sits inside here. It's kind of secured with the hook and loop so that when you open this up, it has that that compartmented photography admin kind of section that gives you that easy access to it without having to take your whole bag off. So that's the intent there. Now, if you're not the photographer, I still think you could find some uses for it. And here's what's interesting is on this panel that flaps open, see that tab again? This is actually an extra pouch that you can put some other things in. There's extra storage, little loop here. And if you are the variety that carries things concealed, boom sticks or what have you, there's some versatility with this as well. I think what these X-Packs have going for them is these are gonna be on the road for a long time. This material is super durable. I'm looking forward to when more of the outdoor bags start using this material. I'm surprised I haven't seen that more yet. Really, really neat stuff. Okay, on the outside of the bag, lots of versatility. You see these little hidden buckles here, but that can expand to get you expansion to lash things on. Two, so we showed you these with the Mystery Ranch three-way bag, the magnetic kind of opening on the front. This has two of those to open up the main compartment. Now, that does have the side entry, and I talked about how I like clamshells, but this is an interesting kind of solution here. When you open this up, this flap, it's almost like a dry bag that you roll and snap shut. So you got a lot of expansion ability there. I mean, this is a big compartment for an everyday carry bag that's fairly compact. And so, but this is more of that kind of bucket enclosure. So again, if you're trying to get in there, that might be hard to kind of find things except for that side entry, which makes it a little bit easier. So big, big open area there. Now on this outside, there's also kind of this hidden, if you will, deep exterior pouch. Not, not really anything going on from an admin section, but there are path throughs in case you want to run charging cables or something for phones or whatever else. So that goes right there. Now something, again, this doesn't seem like a big deal, but I like it. I love those magnetic clips. It's very satisfying to clip those into place and undo them. Do that one more time just for kicks. Boom, so it kind of lines itself up. <clears throat> the easy access pouch on the top. This is the deepest and biggest of any, I think, of the bags that we were looking at. Again, it also has a loop or area if you want to, you know, lash your, uh, your keys to or anything like that. But if you have a lot of things that you need real quick access to, this is a great bag for that. And so it just goes deep into that panel. 
and hides little lashing points on the outside of it. So, pretty cool bag, pretty heavy duty. Like this, this just feels like, I would, I would probably put this up almost against any outdoor bag just because how rugged it is. And then that side carry panel there in case you want to go that way. And one more time just to show you. Oh, that is one complaint I have on this. Obviously this doesn't look like a briefcase, right? So for my specific use, I wouldn't really grab this. Even though I would still prefer that the shoulder straps in a hybrid type bag like this, that they could be stowed away somehow. But again, really, really cool bag. All right, last. We're gonna cover Nomadic. Now, Nomadic is a brand based out of Utah. The design team is in Utah. Now, these are two very popular bags. These guys got big on Kickstarter and have just grown and expanded their product line. I've actually used their wallet. Do I have it on me? I've had their wallet for maybe close to a decade, six, seven years, something like that. And I just absolutely love their design philosophy and how they put together their products. So anyway, we wanted to give their bags a shot because these are also getting very popular. So we're gonna cover their travel bag and then the Navigator 15. Now I will tell you, a lot of you, I mean, you're gear nuts, so you get this. When I was eyeing different EDC bags, this kind of became my grail. I was looking at this one like, man, I think that's the perfect one. Oh, and it was close in lots of ways, but it did fall short in some. I still like it, but we're gonna cover these guys. I'm gonna start with the travel bag and then we're gonna get into the Navigator 15. The travel pack is a 20 liter bag. It's nice and compact. Again, it could definitely work as an EEC bag. Uh, the material on it is a synthetic. It almost has kind of a leather type vibe to it, but it's kind of a sleek feel to it. So I'm gonna start right on the outside. Now these guys put a lot of attention into the detail and it shows in a lot of ways. So these guys have a magnetic kind of enclosure here. This is for the water bottle expansion. Now one thing I do like about this, again, it's a little clever thing, but I, I, it makes a big difference. So with some of these expandable water bottle pouches on bags, they're all kind of sewn to the, to the bottom of the bag. So they kind of have the seam running the whole way. So even if the top open up, the bottom stays shut. What that does is it kind of creates a, almost a squeeze on the bottle to try to push it out. But this has that magnet on both sides so that it has a uniform compression on that bottle on the outside. Again, small detail, but I was impressed with it. And then the magnet, I like that. It just gets out of the way. So it's not hanging floppy, you know, out to the side. It just gets out of the way. Really smart there. Also got the side carry. I think it's on both sides. Yeah, so you got side carry on both sides. And it also has the water bottle container on both sides if you want to carry your water bottle externally. All right, so looking at the suspension, this is one of the most clever that I've seen for any of the hybrid bags where it's intended to be, you can do briefcase, shoulder carry, messenger bag style, whatever. So again, just your normal kind of clip here. It's for the sternum strap. This does have the sliding sternum strap that I like. Again, this is my favorite. But to stow the arm straps, they have this clever thing. So one of the ones, the, the ones that I've shown you already where you kind of have to jam down the shoulder straps and tuck them in from the top, they can kind of bunch up a little bit and maybe, you know, not, not fit in there the best. But these guys have a very clever, elegant solution here. So there is a snap and it's almost like a wing. So this back panel acts like a wing. It opens up and then you can tuck the strap down inside of it. And what that does is it prevents the straps from kind of crossing or overlapping as you're tucking them down away, keeps things nice and tight. So that is how you stow away the arms, the shoulder strap. So I don't have to do that for both. You get the picture there. Has this neat rib material ventilation there to keep you, keep you cool when you're out and about. So let's open that back up. So it's got a very nice stowing capability. Now this has the AquaGuard zippers. Let's open up the main. So this, I believe, one more time, just so you see it, I like to reiterate this, but I do like security zipper pulls that have the hole that you can connect either with a tiny padlock or some other even device, even just high string through it. Okay. TSA compliant for you to tuck your laptop in and your iPad right there. Again, my use experience recently is that no matter the airport, they still want you to pull out the laptop and any devices that you have larger than a cell phone. So a tablet, anything like that, even large external batteries, sometimes I think they want you to pull out. So this feature, even though it's cool, you're intended to be able to put this on the security, whatever they call it, treadmill thing, they send it through the x-ray machine, but they still want you to pull it out. So that feature kind of doesn't mean much to me anymore, but it still is there if you want it. 
All right, nice and padded suspension so that the backpack or the, the laptop isn't actually touching the bottom of the bag. It's suspended so that you can preserve your backpack a little bit. And then this panel is right here in case you want to tuck any other books, what have you. Now, <coughs> this is called the travel bag. And the intent here is if you want to have that one bag that, you know, that one bag to rule them all thing that does everything you want it to and holds your clothing as well as everything else, that's what this is intended for without being too bulky, just in a backpack. So this is where you can put other stuff. They've got this panel here for your clothes and I'll show you how that expands for if you need to put more clothes in there. Here's something that I was really impressed with, the nomadic designs. So the, you'll see on both this one and the Navigator, they both kind of have a rigid structure, right? It looks like it's almost, this kind of reminds me, I'll talk about this one in a minute, but almost like a Thule type, uh, roof type kind of storage compartment for a car. It already has a structure to it and that allows you to have <coughs> kind of these hanging compartments on all surfaces of the bag, on the inside, the back, all that, because it has a structure to it. So in the Nomadic bag, this bag comes specifically with a, they call this a sunglass case container here. I wouldn't use that, it's a little too bulky. I'd find a different use for that. But there's these nice panels along the inside. So if you wanted to use those for a water bottle, you could. Also they have a little uh, retractable keychain thing here. So if you wanted to pull out your keys, use them and then let go, it retracts back in the pocket. You can pull that out if you want to. Big panels, again, and that structure allows you to be storing things on the inside and preserve that room, that open space on the inside. So in all of the nomadic bags that I'm familiar with, they have pretty smart pass-throughs if you wanna run charging cables through it, if you put your phone in your bag or your AirPods or your watch or anything else and you wanted to be charging when you're on the move. They have that, again, nice zipper panels. Something that these guys have, I'm not sure if it's in this one, might be the other one. I think there's an RFID. We'll find it. Anyway, let me, you can just cut that whole section out. So you just saw that main compartment where you can tuck some of your clothes, but what Nomadic has built into this bag, into this travel bag, Again, this is this 360 expansion that gives you an extra, I think it's 10 or 11 liters. So watch what happens here. I just did that and that's how much it opens it up. Those gussets really open up. And here's what's super clever. Typically when you have these expansions, there's another zipper that goes around like a clamshell and that's how you access that compartment. But these guys actually took that compartment and when you open the expansion, that's when it exposes the zipper for that clothes compartment or for that luggage compartment, whatever you want to call it. So that zipper was exposed when you exposed or when you opened up the expansion. So this is going to go all the way around. And now you have that clamshell and you have all that extra space for your clothing if that's how you want to pack your clothes. If you don't want to have a separate suitcase, that's a really, really neat way of doing it. <coughs> In fact, I think it's novel. I haven't seen anybody else do that where you have to open the expansion zipper and that's what exposes the zipper for that compartment. All right, let's get that closed up. So that pretty much wraps up the travel bag for Nomadic. Now they do have another bag, which I kind of own. It's called, I just think they call it their backpack, the Nomadic backpack. Same size, same dimension, same look is all this, but it doesn't have that travel compartment. Instead, it has more organization for like something that a typical maybe a professional worker would have so it has a neat like keyboard slot mouse slot all that kind of stuff in the the laptop area which is pretty neat because again i try to keep my clothes in my actual suitcase so nothing special nothing too fancy at least on the the quick access pocket on the top it is a little bit small i prefer a bigger one but it does have the pass through you can feel it in there for the cable to kick into it so really really cool bag if you're looking for one of those compact bags that's you know maybe one two three day trip maybe where you put some clothes in there as well as your other essentials like a laptop or camera or anything else like this this is a really really strong option for that and i am a fan of that stowaway for the straps in case you need it to look a little more professional so nomadic right there all right this is the one we're going to wrap up with today i think we've given you plenty of options this is the nomadic navigator 15 15 stands for 15 liter 
Now, I kind of fell in love with just the look of this bag. You know, it's kind of that, well, I don't need to go there. Anyway, nice and low profile. The word, the one word that describes this to me when I see it is felt. It's just nice and long and trim. Now, that, in fact, actually turns into one of the things that I don't like about it after actually using it which is one reason that you should always try to use your gear to actually figure out what you really use and what you just think looks cool or sounds cool. From an aesthetic standpoint, in my opinion, I just really, really dig the aesthetic of this. It's really clean, sleek, simple, not a lot of frills, very symmetrical. In my mind, this almost looks like a parachute pack for James Bond or something. It just looks cool and tight to me. Now, Here's where we're gonna start getting into some of the things that I don't like about it. If you just need a lightweight, somewhat larger briefcase or backpack to carry around from you know, a daily commute, just hop in between offices or rooms or whatever, this could be great. The problem I ran into it with it is when traveling, and I'll show you a couple of reasons why, but I'll kind of work that into what I do like about it. I already talked about the aesthetic, like the structure of it, that leaves it so on the inside you have some nice room. I'll even start with uh, something that I really, really like is the water pouch on the outside. Now, again, these guys have the AquaGuard zipper, so high quality, you know, keeps the water out. The water pouch is hidden on the inside, and I really like how they've done it. Now, you can see down here, there's a little drainage hole. So what they've done with the water pouch is they've lined it with a waterproof material so that when you tuck your bottle in there, and this was something that was important to me. It will fit a 32 ounce bottle in there. So here's again our Vargo bottle. I'm gonna tuck it down in there. And it does fit in there. And because this is their para bottle, it has that paracord kind of uh, handle type thing connecting the lid to the bottle. You just kind of have to tuck that up and out of the way. Now when you zip this up, it fits in there nice and snug. You can't see from the outside. It's not bumping into anything. If it did leak, it's lined with a waterproof material. It's not gonna get stuff inside wet and it will drain out the bottom. I think that was, this is the smartest water bottle pouch that I've seen out of any of the bags that we've looked at. I really, really like that feature. That's the water bottle. All right, from the outside, they do have kind of a stealth pocket on the outside. You don't really see it. It's right here under this lid, under this flap. Now you can open this up. By the way, they do have, it's a little bit difficult to see in these, but these are called security zipper pulls. So there are these little loops that they have. You may not, I mean, we can probably pick that up right there, but it's just a really, really thin loop that you can feed the zipper pull through just to buy you a couple seconds, you know, in case there's a thief or, or somebody trying to get into your zippers, you can just feed that through and it makes it a little tougher to get out. Anyway, I had high hopes for this exterior pouch. This is one of those opportunities that I think was lost. It's very thin and it's very constrained. So see these, these cutouts here constrain the opening. So there's a bigger opening inside, but that makes it a little tougher to get at. Now I would have loved to have a nice big admin section with pen slots and little thin spots or business cards or whatever else, or a, or a micro charger or USB jump drives, whatever. I would have liked to have that section, but there's not in there. So I had to add an insert. Again, I just traveled with this one, so I was kind of trying to test it out and see how I like to configure it. So I put a little admin insert in that. Now this is a flap one. You can, this is intended to like roll over the flap of like a moleskin or something like the cover so that you can have it there. Also, you can tuck whatever else you want into it. So I added that in to give myself an admin compartment. And then again, we're, we're gonna do another video about what to pack in EDC, how we at least pack out. But I've got a first aid kit and this outside patch, but that, or pouch, but that's about all I can fit. I think that was a lost opportunity, that exterior pouch. So that was one of my problems with it. You may not need that, but that's what I want. Okay, let's open up the main compartment. This is something that I do <coughs> like. Now this, you'd think this is a full clamshell, which is awesome, but when you open it, oh, it gets stuck with these gussets. Now this, I really think this would have been a great opportunity to have like the snap or Velcro like we showed you with the, the Mystery Ranch pouch. So if you wanted to open this all the way up into a clamshell, 
you could. Now, I get it, right? They don't want, you know, if you're carrying this around, you just need to get in there. They don't want this to fall apart and everything to fall out. I get it. But if you did want a clamshell, I think it would be nice to at least give you that versatility. So let me take some of this stuff out. So you can see what it looks like inside. So just a sneak peek for that. Here's a little trauma kit that we put in there. Moleskin. Hygiene and map compass. Let me just get this out of here so you can see the inside. All right. On the inside, this kind of tumor looking thing right here. I shouldn't say that. That might offend people. This protuberance right here is, is the inside of the water bottle pouch. So you see that that does cut into your space on the inside. This would open it up significantly. If you took this out, that gives you a lot more versatility and space. But again, I, I really do like that tucked away for the water bottle. So there is some decent little admin. There's lots of little pouches here. I do have an external um, or a, a compact um, charger there. Now here's something that I do like. I think there were some features maybe on a couple of the bags, but this stands out. So this is an RFID pouch. So if you're traveling and you want to protect credit cards, passport, anything like that, that may be able to be scanned, this has that RFID material already baked in so you can tuck it right in there. It's part of the bag. You don't need a separate compartment. And that way you have some extra safety while traveling. So that is pretty neat. And then extra pouches. And let me just try to point this out one more time. Because these nomadic bags have kind of a structure established on the sides, on the back, it enables you to have these pouches suspended, but still keep that empty space on the inside. I hope I'm communicating that well to where you get it. So it's, it is more like, again, almost like one of those roof racks, travel racks on a car that has kind of that structure established. Um, now, again, the pro there is what I just talked about, how you can kind of pack things away there, but the con is it doesn't have a lot of flexibility or stretch. So that was what I ran into when I traveled with this one. I like a lot of features of this, but I, it, once you kind of hit capacity, you can't really go more. It starts kind of losing its shape and deforming because of the harder structure that it has. So anyway, that is the main pouch. At the top, again, I do love these AquaGuard zippers. Let me show you another way that these security zippers work or these security zipper poles is one thing they do promote is that you can slip one inside the loop of the other and pull them together. And that just buys you a little bit of, of time again for somebody, it doesn't make it as easy for, or makes it a little harder for somebody to get into there. So you have to feed those out. So let's look at this top pouch. Again, that AquaGuard stuff. So I've got, um, again, I've got a headlamp in there. I've got a frequently used charger. I got some mints, got AirPods, all that. And then in this bag, you might be able to see it here, but they have these nice pass-throughs for your charging cables. So that runs inside the bag to an external battery pack. So then I can charge my AirPods or anything else that I put up in that. So that's that easy access pouch. Then on the back, or this is, I'm sorry, this is the laptop compartment. Opens up again, AquaGuard. So what I have in here is I can put my laptop in here. Now here's, here's where I got burned just a touch. I thought I had a 15 inch laptop, but it was 16 inch. And so this is designed for 15 inch. Now we'll give it to them. It's like perfect. Cause with my 16 inch, <clears throat> I had to push the corner of the laptop in there just so I could get the zipper around it. So it is pretty snug. If you have something like a MacBook pro or something that's a 16 inch, you can barely get it in there, but it'd be a nice fit for a 15 inch. You know, just in case you're interested, I actually have a little travel solar panel that's ultra light. I think this thing weighs three ounces. So that way I've got some renewable energy on me in case I need it in an emergency. So that is the Nomadic 15. Again, this is what I, what I thought was going to be my dream EDC bag, but there's just a couple little things that it falls short on me on and a couple of them I'm getting to right now. One, I really, really think that these should be stowable. The shoulder straps should have been designed to be able to stow like they did on their other pack, but they don't have that. So that's a little bit of a knock for me. And this one, I don't know why they did it like this. I don't know. Like it doesn't make any sense to me, but this one, it shouldn't irritate me, but it does. And I'll show you the pass through for the bag to be able to sit on a rolling suitcase is oriented so that the backpack is going to be sitting upright. Now, if you've ever pushed one of those to the airport, they can get a little top heavy when you get in those transitions on and off gates or the bridges that go out to the airplanes. You can kind of hit those bumps and you're going uphill. So if, you're, if your thing gets too top heavy, you know, you're toppling over. But uh, that pass-through is oriented vertically. 
and you kind of have to fight with the straps a little bit to get it on there and then you kind of have to tuck the straps away and now you're left with just a little smidge of handle and now you're even more top heavy. I just don't know why they didn't do that, particularly since they have the groove or why they did do this. Why didn't they just orient it so that you could have carried the backpack on its side with the straps stowed away. Anyway, those are my big gripes with the bag. I still really like it. I think it's got a lot of really cool features to it, but if I could change anything about it, that would be it. All right, guys, that was the Nomadic 15 Navigator. I sure hope that we gave you enough good ideas for what to look for in EDC bags, as well as if you're interested in any of these particular bags, all of them have some really, really great features. We didn't show any trash today. These are good, good bags. So you'll probably be solid, particularly if they meet your particular needs or special needs for when you're traveling. So here's what we need you to do. I said at the beginning of the video, but I'm gonna remind you again now. In the comments, go ahead and tell us which bag you liked and why and what profession you are. Go, I mean, it helps with, with the algorithm, you know that. Like the video, share it. Your comments are gonna give us a clue for what bags to give away in which giveaways. So go ahead, get active down there and then we'll start filling you in as we get closer to Christmas here, what we're giving away and how. So <clears throat> thanks for joining us today. And until next time, and Omnia Paras.